We stay in the troubled Boko area in the Upper East region where women who are no longer able to bear the brunt of the protracted conflict in the area took to the streets earlier today to protest, asking government to do more to end the violence. Plus, the latest coming through right now is that there's been a secular from the courts. In fact, the courts in the area have been shut over safety concerns. That's the latest coming through the Boko situation right now. I'm going to tell you all of that. Stay with us here, um, here on Ghana Tonight. But we're also live on 3FM 92.7 tonight. Let's hear from the women in Boko earlier today who hit the streets calling on authorities to be quick in their response to ending hostilities resulting from the resurgence of the conflict. Take a look. It's very bad. And the killing been do uh, wale wale. It's very bad. As far as they are, as far as they are imposing yeah. curfew in Boku, they should be curfew in what in wale wale. Abagala is here with the help of the government, but they are saying it's from the local government who has brought him inside. So we don't know what is happening in Boku again. And, and they didn't mince words on that. Those were the, the women there wailing and asking for urgent steps to be taken to swiftly deal with the situation in Boko. And we, there's been a number of things that's happened over there. Just a few, there's uh, a chronology of events over the period, at least right from the beginning of this year, that specifically the 17th of January, uh, some gunmen attacked the tricycle operators near Boko Community Center. Some two persons were recorded and pronounced dead. A number of persons also sustained some injuries as a result of that. The next day, three persons were killed with reports suggesting that there are some military persons in uh, Sabongari uh, during a security operation following renewed fighting. And in January, same month, the 19th, the next day. So take note of these first three days in, in the year, 17th, 18th, 19th January, a bus carrying students, if you recall, was attacked near Binduri, uh, causing injuries, which was now related to some ethnic tensions in the area. A number of the students who were on that bus also s sustained some several degrees of injury. March 16, 2022, one person killed, three soldiers were injured in the gunfight. And you can also look at right from December 2022, we saw those renewed clashes as well. In fact, in this month, what we are seeing right now, gunmen blocked Bogatanga Tamale Highway, opened fire on travelers. Eight persons were reported dead. This was just two days ago. And on the 26th of October, exchange of gunfire due to the return of a rival chief in the area. According to what we are hearing right now, based on the reports from the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Stephen Asamoabati himself, they put the death toll based on government's own records to 16. And we understand that, that that number could be more. More people may have died as a result of it, but the official figures from the ministry's perspective and account, 16 people. But earlier today, the minister addressed the press as well on this matter, plus that indication we're getting as well, or two four say to the second, has been called upon by government to lead a mediation process to tackle this matter in Boko. This is what Stephen Asamobatin said earlier today. Minister responsible for chieftaincy matters and with the government must be maintained. Government is guided by its responsibility to protect lives and property and above all to enforce law and order to restore normalcy as quickly as possible.
Well, so that's General Sivin and Samoa Boateng. Then we're going to be hearing more from him as we go on. Um, we're also live on 3FM 92.7. Now, before we came on air tonight, we got information from the courts. Another development, apart from the businesses that are shutting down in Boko and, and leaving the place, and in fact, a number of businesses have vacated the area over the years because of this unstable security situation over there. And that's also impacted on the economic situation and the life of the people there. Apart from that, and the people who are fleeing the area as a result of this renewed clashes, the courts have had to take a decision in the interest of the lives of the employees of the judiciary in there. This is it that we got just before we came on air. The attention of the Honorable Lady Chief Justice has been drawn to concerns expressed by lawyers and other stakeholders about the current situation in Boko and its environs. They say, in order to ensure the safety and security of the judges, staff, lawyers, and court users, the Honorable Lady Chief Justice has ordered the closure of the following courts with immediate effect until further notice. One, the High Court Bogatanga, Second Court Bogatanga, Second Court, that's the District Court as well, and the District Court in Zwarungu, District Court in Zebela, District Court in Garu, and the District Court in Bongo. And the registrars are to keep all assets of the courts in proper custody, and all staff are to stay safe. And please accept the compliments of the Honorable Lady Chief Justice. That's the information coming through right now. And so all of these courts have been closed as a result of the, the situation in Boko. Uh, right now, and, and that's troubling to say the least. And and the people who have been watching quite closely how things are playing out there, uh, we're going to be connecting with uh, one man who has uh, n n been not just a member of parliament, one of the longest serving MPs in Ghana, been part of a number of parliaments. He's still also a member of this eighth parliament, specifically the member of parliament for the Zebela constituency. Honorable Kletus Avokal is also an opinion leader in the area. He's joining us on Zoom right now. Uh, Honorable Kletus Avokal, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, if you can unmute for me, if you can unmute for me, that, that, that will be good. Hello? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. Now, uh, with the developments right now, as we're seeing, and, and you've seen the women there, and you're watching me right now, the women who are wailing and asking for intervention, the courts have been closed down as a result of this renewed clashes. As a member of parliament, opinion leader in the area, this certainly must be giving you sleepless nights, is it not? No doubt, uh, Alfred. Very, very unfortunate development that we have in the area. But it is not today's development. It has been there for the past four years. Uh, it has uh, just reenacted uh, some few days ago, and then uh, it is even ex uh, escalating. And that is why the courts in Bolga, Navru, I mean, Bolga, Tanga, Bongo, etc., have been closed. Heated to those courts were working, except the court in Boku that had been closed. But it, it's a, it's, it, it's a demonst it demonstrates clearly that uh, there's more to it than uh, we, 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 we have in the Athens. And you talk about more to it than what we are seeing right now. We've seen the evolution of this conflict over time. It's not just chieftaincy anymore, is it not? Because we've seen the political side of it and now the, the criminal side of it as well, where politically over time, if the NPP is in power, the Mamprushis feel empowered. If the NDC is in power, the Kusashis also feel empowered. That, that's a reality, isn't it? Well... Uh, to a large extent, yes. The challenge we have is that people or government of the day does not want to address the truth, the truth of the matter, does not want to, uh, I mean, uh, resolve this matter. It is, there's no chieftaincy dispute pending in Boko. There's no chieftaincy dispute pending in any court or any, any, any administrative body in Boko or Ghana, for that matter. The Boko chieftaincy matter has been resolved by the various courts of competent jurisdiction. The last one was the Supreme Court of Ghana in 2003, where the Mampuses filed a writ in the Supreme Court challenging the Karen Bokunaba 
asking the Supreme Court to make a declaration that the Kusasi man cannot be Bokunawa except a man Prince, Prince, and that the uh, PNDC law 75 of 1983 should be declared null and void, etc., etc. Then a day to the hearing of the case, the man Prince threw in the towel. Their lawyers filed a, a notice of discontinuance of their action in the Supreme Court. But when the case was called and then the, all the parties were in court in 2003, I was there personally. The, the Supreme Court judges, presided by Justice, late Justice Aqua, may he so rest in perfect peace, asked them why they were withdrawing their case with notice we were liberty to come back. And uh, they said that they, they, when they read the Bokunaves defense, they, they had no legs to stand. That means they didn't have a good case. And the court sees with the facts and the law because this case was resolved in 1958 by the then Court of Appeal. That was the highest court of the land in favor of the Kusasis. Decree 112 of 1966 distilled the Kusasi chiefs. PNDC law 75 of 1983 restored the Kusasi chiefs, that's the Kerem Bokunaba, to the Court of Appeal status of, 1980, of 1958. Then the Supreme Court nailed the matter told the, the man priests that they have no case at all, that have regard to the, uh, the, 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 the evidence that we have exhibited mm. in our statement of defense. There was okay. no case before the court. And therefore, they had no right. The Supreme Court ruled that they had no right to come under any court in Ghana and challenge the Karen Bokunaba about the Boko chief dancing. The Supreme Court ruled in 2003, and that was during the era of President Kufo. That was but, the time that the man priests went to Kufo and told him that they were MPP, they had support him to come to power, and therefore he should seize the chieftaincy from the Kusasis for them. Well, but, and Kufo uh, told him that under the constitution, they could not do any such thing. But taking into consideration how things are playing out right now, one of the recommendations and the routes that government is considering to intervene in these latest clashes, which has claimed over 16 lives, is to have a 2 4 say to the second lead some mediation effort in the area. You are an opinion leader there. How much of a difference will this make? Oh, but uh, this is not, uh, it's not a new matter. About uh, a year or two years ago, the, 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 the government of the day had repaired the marriage pay or uh, I had appeared with the Bokunaba before the Tumfo to present the Kusasi side of the story. I had been there with my very good friend and brother, Honorable Mama Ayaraga, to meet the Otunfo on this matter. And uh, the uh, Otun Four seemed to have hit the wall because he told the Nairi that uh, the enskinment of uh, Sedu Abakri was illegal and that the Nairi should go and denounce the enskinment and then he would meet the Nairi and Bokunaba on an even floor, uh, even, uh, on a level playing field and then resolve the matter, see how they can resolve the matter. And that if Abakri remained in Nairobi as a chief, uh, the Asante Hindi said that, Otun Four said that, in fact, he didn't think that it was fair to the Bokunaba. To be for him to be handling a matter with a commoner. The Nairi rejected that, that offer or advice from the Asante Hini, and therefore the matter became stalled. I see. But so, so, so there's, not, not, uh, there's nothing to refer to anybody as at now. But the fact is that, uh, as I indicated, Alfred, there's no chieftaincy dispute pending in Boko. The Kusasis are there, the Boko number is there through due process, through rule of law. Well, but no what is happening now is, is um, I call it um, uh, yeah, what it, uh, banditry, criminality, and lack of respect for the rule of law and but, due process. But, but there's, one, the, there's one thing that the there's one thing that uh, Mr. Walker, there's one thing that we, uh, we take into consideration. In fact, and it stands out quite clearly. Yesterday, when the uh, statement came through from government, and for that matter, national security, for that matter, after that, that meeting of the security heads in this country, chaired by the president himself, there was a clear yeah. identification of the fact that the presence of uh, the said Seydou Abagri is, is an issue, and in fact, yeah. um, will continue to be a problem. That's stated in, the, in that particular true. statement that was released. But what was That's missing right. is that there was no recommendation to deal with the problem in that statement as to whether he was going to be removed there from, from that area or, or not. What, what are you expecting, finally, before we go? That is the challenge that we have. The government uh, said so, and I was very happy with, that they, with the fact that they have diagnosed the matter. They said that the, the, the violence in Boko today is occasioned by the illegal president of Abagri posing as a Boko Naba. 
the government has made that uh, finding of fact. And I was very pleased with that finding of fact. So what is the way forward? The way forward is to make sure that uh, publicly, Abagre's uh, situation is denounced as a chief right from the Nairis level to Boko level, or they remove Abagre from Boko to have peace in the area. And I think that the government must be working on uh, some of these scenarios. I cannot tell them the best way to do it. I think that they have enough uh, intelligence, they have enough security, they have enough experience to be able to resolve this matter while they have identified the, the issue, the cause of the, of, the, of the conflict. It is not enough to vary the curfew. The people of Boko have suffered for far too long for the past four years under the administration of the MPP. They've suffered for too long. People talk about, don't talk politics, don't do that. Nobody talk about politics. But there's a government of the day that the people had voted for. And the government has taken an oath to defend the constitution and to defend every Ghanaian, but, but, their lives and their properties. But, but so, let me ask so, you this. As you concede that uh, th this matter has also taken a political nature, you concede earlier that when, when the MPP is in power, one faction feels empowered. When the NDC is in power, one faction feels empowered. As, as a respected opinion leader in the area, are you going to be willing to join forces with the government approach to bring lasting peace in, in Boko? I, I have said that several times, uh, several years ago, that there's no, there's no use in fighting. In fact, um, our people have a saying that if a dog has a bone in the mouth, then that dog does need to back for the bone to drop so that another dog might come and pick it and then you can start chasing the rest of them. The Kusasis have nothing to fight for. They have, no, not, they have nothing to fight for. The Boko Nava is the chief. So he wants peace of the area so he can benefit from the fruits of his labor. We are talking about politics because there is a political government in, in office that is supposed to protect Ghanaians, their right. property and their lives. That is supposed to ensure that there is due process and the rule of law in the country. This is what we are saying. And that is not political. That is, that is administrative, and that is, that, is, that is what we should be doing. The government must be doing. Must right. be protecting innocent people. Must be protecting people's rights. Okay. That is, so if somebody is saying that the government is reneging on, on its duties, the government is uh, I mean, treating, treating Syria Bank with kid gloves, I mean, look at one person, one person alone, for four years, Boko has okay. been under curfew for four years. Nobody rides a motorcycle in Boko town, Teachers, workers, nurses, everybody, they can't ride a motor and go to work. Farmers cannot do business and go to work with a motor. Everybody. Boko, the people of Boko, the Kusasi people, they can't ride, uh, uh, what do you call, wear a smoke because they suspect that somebody uh, might become uh, carrying a weapon and, in the smoke. And, and, and All that's these the, things. And that's the, years. That, and that's the and reason that's why. Curfew, curfew cannot be used to solve a problem. Curfew is just a temporary measure. To, well, to contain the situation and escalate the situation so that we now look at how you can resolve the matter. For four years, curfew. Well, that's the reason so why the women... What, so what is the government doing? Well, Are they being responsive? Well, Avocat, appreciate your time on this matter, and that's you why got, the women... You are sacrificing yes, several the, lives the, the, because the, of the, the interests the, of one the person. The women were quite clear in their words and their, their yes. message to you and many others who are watching right now. Thank you for this. And then also that, that expression of commitment to partner whatever process to bring lasting peace in Boko. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us on this matter. As a member of parliament for the Zebela constituency, uh, the Honorable Kletus Avoka, and he is one of the longest seven MPs that we have in this country at the moment, being a, in part of a number of all these parliaments right from uh, the inception of this fourth republic, except for one. Uh, Data has contributed to the, to the development of this country in many ways.